Hi, welcome to Only Gold Dad. I'm Mark. Here we are in the train room. You can see there's a bit of a difference. Let's have a look at these baseboards. So here you can see the baseboards, they go all the way around the room and I've constructed them from 2 by one with 2 by one cross pieces, the batten screwed along the wall, then the cross piece is screwed to that and then the end piece screwed. It's supported by 2 by 2 and on top of that then I have a 12 mil ply. This is a shutter and ply, which is quite cheap. It's good, it's durable. Uh, you'll find with it that one side is smoother than the other. It's obviously best to have the smooth side up to run your layout on. It's screwed together using four mil diameter screws of various lengths. You want to use a screw that is long enough to go through the pieces of wood. You don't want it too short, you want it as long as possible. You can see under the baseboards, I've built shelves using the same method, two by one, with cross frames of two by one, and they're all at 16 inch centers to give good support. For the shelves underneath, I've used nine mil ply, which is cheaper than the 12 mil ply for the baseboards. So when you've decided on the design of your baseboards and you've drawn them out, you can then work out what materials you need. When you have your list of materials, you can then have a look to see where the best place to buy them are. Uh, home base being q are very handy and have good cutting services but they might necessarily be the cheapest place to get your wood always have a look around for builders merchants that sort of thing timber yards and you might find a better price likewise when you're looking for screws and brackets and that sort of thing shop around when your building materials have been delivered leave them in the room that you're going to build your layout in for at least a week and longer if possible it just helps them acclimatize to the room here are some of the tools I use during the building process. It's very handy if you have two drills, one you can use as an electric screwdriver and one for drilling. It saves messing around, swapping bits around as you're working, it speeds the process up. You need various drill bits, uh, masonry bits if you're drilling into wall and wood bits for the wood and also a countersinking tool. Uh, obviously tape measure, squares, get a good pencil this is actually a 2H pencil, so it's got a hard lead in it, so it leaves a good line and the lead doesn't keep breaking in it. Obviously you need saws, circular saw, hand saw, and of course a level, so you can make sure everything is level. So here we have the drill bits, just so you know. With the pointed shape at the end of there, that's a masonry bit used for drilling into brick and concrete and then that is a wood bit again just for drilling into wood this little thing here that is for countersinking and I'll explain why you would countersink now when screwing these pieces of wood together I drilled pilot holes in the wood. This helps the wood to stop splitting. Now what you want to use is a drill bit that's slightly smaller than your screw. So my screws are four mil, so I use a three mil drill bit. This still gives the screw something to bite on in this piece of wood. And again, in that piece of wood. Countersinking is important. So you use that little tool to countersink a hole. And again, this will stop the wood splitting, especially on the ends, if you countersink the hole. I'll show you what a countersink looks like now. You can see here on the baseboard, this hole has been countersunk. So you just get the countersunk in your drill, drill it in, and it just gives a space for the head of the screw to fit in so it fits flush with the piece of wood. 
so this helps on wood to stop it splitting but also here on the baseboard so it's flush it's not sticking out so it's not going to get in the way of track work safety is important when you're working on any diy projects in your home ear defenders safety glasses mask and gloves all help to give you some protection some of the tools you use will have safety guards on them don't be tempted to remove them they're there for your safety i know they can be a hindrance sometimes but they're a good thing to have you want to make sure your work area is clear as uh, the surfaces you're using for cutting on are clear and you're not going to cut through anything uh, you want to make sure you're wearing no loose fitting clothing that can get caught in any of the electrical tools you also want to make sure anything that you are cutting is secured in place and is not going to jerk out of your hands when you're cutting through it you can see as part of my design i put a bottom shelf in and then I put kickboards beside it. The reason for that is the floor is uneven. So now I have a nice level shelf. And with the kickboards there, if I drop a screw or a spring or something like that, it's not going to disappear under the shelf and never be seen again. For wiring the layout, what I use is 1.5 cable, which is this stuff here. It's a twin and earth cable, which is commonly used in lighting circuits and houses. So what I do is I split the cable, rip out the red, and black or the blue and brown depending on the cable and run them through to drill the holes in the cross members i get a piece of wood like this and i mark where i want the holes as you can see with the arrows so i can do this on each cross member so the holes are more or less in the same place and this makes it easier when you're pulling the cables through You can buy these cables separately, but I just got a good deal on a reel of Twin and Earth and it actually worked out cheaper than buying the cables separately. So I'll split those and I'll pull them through. I'll run one through the center, one pair through the center for the track feed, and then another pair through either side for 12 volt supply for accessories. And once I've all the cables pulled through, I then will uh, fix the baseboards down so they're permanent and they don't move. So what is the overall plan for this model railway? Well, this baseboard level here is going to be the storage fiddle yard. And then I'm actually going to have it going up to this level here, which is about seven inches above, which will be the scenic area. And it will probably incorporate the scenic area somewhere into the fiddle area as well. So we can have a, a two level layout, which I think will give you more interest. The layout is about 10 foot that way by 13 foot that way. I still have to put in a bridging piece here. And again, that will be on two levels. So I've got a plan in my head. And once I get the wiring done and these baseboards screwed down, then I will uh, start laying track and see how it works out. But before I do any of that, I have to finish off the six by four layout, which needs to go into the museum. Unfortunately, with COVID at the moment, the museums are all closed. Um, so I will need to get this done and get it out of here. So I hope you find that useful. A um, little look around my train room, how I've built the baseboards and the future plans. So please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.